Hey, what's up everybody? Video 44 coming at you another video. All right. <clears throat> so it is the day after the Lake has lost another game. I think we're what, two and eight or something like that. And uh, yeah, we're headed to hell at the speed of a, of a demon. I promise you we're going nowhere really, really fast. This team's terrible, real terrible. Um, nothing new took place that made me come to this conclusion. It's just that the losses are piling up and the talent that we're leaning on because of the lack of, I guess, good fortune and health, I guess you can say. Making this sort of our team is just not very good. And I'm trying to separate my short-term fan mind from my wise, got to do things correctly as an organization mind. And that's difficult for me. <laughs> that's very difficult for me because I have both of those minds very loud in my head and what i'm telling you is one part of me wants to trade everything and start the rebuilding process and the other part of me wants to trade a little bit so that i have better stuff to watch every night it's the god's honest truth there's a part of me that wants to make this team better so we don't have to sit through this every night you know and the thing about it is because i understand that we're missing pieces I have to take into account that when those pieces come back, that makes our team more full because a lot of these guys that are on the back of our bench are getting good playing time right now. So that is something that we know we're going to have a luxury of being able to take advantage of once TB, Schroeder, uh, Beverly all come back. Now the team is deeper. You feel a lot better about just the overall fullness of your roster. You can have more opportunities to match up with teams in ways that we're not able to right now things like that so we will be a better team but my thing is the pieces that i named i expect them to be out again that's what it really comes down to those are guys that are going to be in and out of the lineup for the rest of their careers <laughs> those are not guys that i'm saying okay they're going to come back and then we can go on a stretch run we, you know we could come back and wait for them to get hurt again that's the point it's like the, the argument that the Lakers always make is we are never together. We don't have enough time on the floor. We don't practice enough together. We don't schedule practices. We schedule shoot-arounds because we have older players. Uh, injuries are constantly occurring. So guys don't have continuity. It's all kinds of excuses that have to do with leaning on players that you should not be leaning on to begin with. And that is what it really comes down to these pieces are always going to be missing so I, that excuse holds very little weight i think you need to move these pieces and get pieces that you can rely upon so that's so that that is no longer an excuse i don't think i'm saying anything in this camera that people aren't already thinking i was listening to dan the lakers fan listen to laker fans calling in on his platform people are frustrated man you know they're frustrated i thought i was the only one that was seriously frustrated in terms of just sitting in my phone with, with, with nothing but real legitimate bad energy for this team. It's, it's across the board. People are tired of looking at bad teams in Laker uniforms. And the most important thing they have to understand is that we just came out of a bad era. Frank Vogel was a bad era in the most recent short term. But even further back, we just came from a rebuild less than 10 years ago. We just went through that, a very long, patient rebuild. We got all the pieces necessary to get our rebuild, and we threw them all in. Guaranteeing that we would have to go through this all over again. We knew that. Our fan base knew that. Or rather, our front office knew that, but they didn't care. Because they were after the short-term uh, ring because they had to make this LeBron James tenure make sense. And my thing is, the best way to have handled LeBron James, with hindsight being in place, is to just keep the flexibility we had to begin with trade all of those pieces that we traded individually and get back the most for them if we were going to let them go to begin with. B.I. did not fit with, a, with LeBron James. That's okay. But you don't trade B.I., Josh Hart, a bunch of picks that end up turning to Garland and, or Hunter and, and all this different stuff that we gave up just for Anthony Davis to come here, be a part of one ring, and then miss 50 games a year after that. When you could predict he was going to be missing 50 games a year before the trade because he was injury prone when he was in New Orleans. We knew that. It was just a bad trade. All we had to do was wait one year, one summer, and we could have signed AD outright 
and, and not had to give up nearly even half of those assets in order to make room for him to come in. It would have had a twice as good a team right now because of it with the same core in place brought in AD. You know what I'm saying? It's like if you'd have had the same core. We would still be in the same space. We wouldn't have won the 2020 championship. I get that, which is why all this is fine. Even though we hate it, it's fine. But, of course, the Russell Westbrook thing drove it home. We still had a way out, but the Westbrook thing was it. So, okay, fine. Now you got to undo it. That's cool. Just undo it. And the thing about Rob Link is I'm getting, and this is a good thing, but not necessarily in this case, he's waiting for the right deal. He's waiting for the big splash. And so he's always holding pieces, for waiting for the big splash. And that's what happened in the summertime. He was holding pieces. And we're going to make the big trade. But the landscape changed. You know, we couldn't change. The, we, we couldn't understand that the map was going to significantly change what we were looking at. You might have had your, 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 your everything you were going to need. You know what I'm saying? You got everything you're going to need except for the fact that there's a big body of water in between the land spaces that you need to get to. So your trucks and all of that, you need to find either a plane or a boat because we're not going to be able to get there with what we've prepared. And that is what the Lakers figuratively have going on here we can't get to our destination we don't have the pieces but we're set in sail you're going to be driving into the water with trucks this is not a good thing if you're following my analogy the lakers have got to get themselves what they need in order to succeed or change your route <laughs> change your route don't go that way that's the, we don't have to go that way we have trucks let's stay on land and that's what it really comes down to man the lakers just got to Use their brain, do what helps them. Be competitive in intelligent ways, just like I said. Throw all your money at something with the intention of winning. That means you want to be competitive. But if you're throwing all your money at something and you do the wrong things around that, guess what you're doing? You're giving your money to the competition. That's what I'm talking about. It starts with the organization being competitive too. You tired of Balmer kicking you around? You tired of the Celtics having 17 championships too and, and you guys being either behind them or tied with them? It ain't enough to do things the wrong way and, be, and, and and throw a lot of money at it. Guess what you're doing? Putting on a Celtics hat. Putting on a Clipper uniform. That's what you're doing. That's what I'm trying to get people to understand on my channel. There are two ways to be competitive. It's the head-on conventional way. I'm coming at you with my mechanics and my strategy, and I'm going to do what I can to beat you, and we'll see who the best team wins. And it's the game in between the game. It's the things that you need to do around the situation to give yourself the mental edge, the... Uh, leverage edge, doing the things that otherwise help you make good decisions so you have a better team so that that team can be competitive. At the end of the day, the true north of it all is we want to remain competitive. And the best way to do that is to strategize intel intelligently every way possible to give ourselves that advantage so that we can leave our opponents unhappy about coming up against us like we used to for 75 plus years, however long it's been. We are Lakers, and we win both of those battles, not just one. As of late, since Genie has taken over, we've only been winning one battle. We've been really, really conventional. Throw money at it, superstars, that's how you win. It's almost like we listen to the media. All you really need is three players. Everybody else doesn't need to do anything because there's only five guys on the floor at a time. That is not real. That's a lie. That's a lie that I, I can argue was put in place so that people would do things that hurt their, their franchise. I can argue that was put in place so that you would overpay somebody who didn't have no business being overpaid. Or letting somebody come to a team that they wanted to come to that probably wouldn't have been to the best for the team to do that. So they put that in the media, make that like, oh yeah, no, you don't need a deep team. You just need a couple of stars and that's it. There's always some idiot saying, saying it like that. Fans be like, yeah. Owners that don't know anything, yeah, no. This is what you get, Brooklyn and the Lakers. This is what you get when you do it that way. When you listen to those guys, don't listen to those guys. <laughs> don't listen to those guys. So with this moral of the story, same people telling you that the Clippers and the Nets are contenders, it didn't show you, the paper didn't show you that. Now, now that you're seeing what I was telling you all summer long, on paper, it didn't show you that. It never did. They were lying. <laughs> they were literally telling you something that they did not believe because they wanted you to 
to believe it. That's all. I cannot stress it enough. The Clippers, not a contender. Why? Same reason the Lakers aren't. The Nets, not a contender. Why? Same way the Lakers are. What aren't? What do these teams have in common? The interests of the media. The interests of the media. They want those teams on their channels. So those teams try to oblige by doing things the wrong way, and that's why they suck. It's a fact. The, Net, the Knicks tried to do it and just failed. Lucky them. They tried. They couldn't. They were doing their very best to ruin themselves with that Donovan Mitchell trade. And they didn't. And they'll be happy they didn't. It is what it is, man. It's not about how good the player is. Of course, the player is good. It's not about that. It's about what you're giving up and not knowing exactly what it's worth when you do. All it takes is one pick to beat Donovan Mitchell. In fact, several people picked, passed him up who were supposed to draft him. The Detroit Pistons passed up Donovan Mitchell and took, what's the dude from the Clippers? The shooter? Can't think of his name right now, but that's the point. That was a draft pick that wasn't even that good. Donovan Mitchell could have been a part of a trade that had him and about eight other picks in it too. You know what I'm saying? Look at Darius Garland. We already said it in this video, if I'm not mistaken. That was part of the Laker trade that we gave for Anthony Davis. We would trade Anthony Davis for Darius Garland's value. <laughs> like, literally. That's, not, that's even value, basically. And he was just a throw-in pick. This is why you don't do it. Because you don't know what it is that you're throwing, giving away. You don't know. You have no idea. You know what I mean? You have no idea. So, that is ultimately what it is. Teams need to stop doing that. Teams need to stop listening to ESPN, them guys. Because they're going to make just as much money if you suck as you do if you're good. They got a plan for both. That's never forget that. They got a plan for both. They love when the Nets are trash. They love when the Lakers are trash. Why? Because they get to do blooper reels. Talk about it every day. You know what I'm saying? So they will run your team into the ground suggesting stuff that you have no business doing. Hire professionals to do it properly so your fan bases don't hate you. It's that simple. You know? Uh, one thing I understand about now I'm listening, and the more I listen to people, I understand the people who have a lot are the ones that are often targeted with the game. And what I mean by game is getting played, whatever on the, sell you some beachside property in Iowa type stuff. They really be getting played, man. And you can see it. <laughs> like, you can clearly see how they be getting played. The arrogant ones that be thinking that they high and mighty, we're going to do what we do. Uh, okay, cool, yeah, but you're going to be played too. Somebody going to run some game on you. And you see it. Or the ones that don't know no better, they're just like, well, I just trust whoever, I trust whoever. As long as they support me, we're good. Hey, you're getting run game on. Yep, they're going to take advantage of that. This is just, we just got to learn the lessons that the people who are living their lives making these mistakes provide. <laughs> you can't do it. Jeannie Buss surround herself with friends. It's a billion dollar business. Ain't no friends. You better surround yourself with pros, sharks, people who know what to do with that money, people who know how to make the most out of that money. People whose interest is wrapped up in you making the most of that money. If you're putting your friends around a the business, they don't know what they're doing. You know, they know how to be your friend. They don't know how to make you money. They're going to tell you what they know how to do. And when they do, they're going to get the results that come with that. Not stellar. Not Laker-like. And that's what I'm trying to express. Keep listening to the Knights of the Round Table. You're going to keep getting the results of listening to the Knights of the Round Table. Rambuses and all those guys. This is what you get. No man's land. No man's land. We are nowhere. For those who want to know where the Lakers are, probably the worst situation in all of the NBA right now. <laughs> no exaggeration. I think we're in the worst spot. I would say we're slightly worse than the Nets. Slightly worse. And the reason why I think we're slightly worse is because I am now aware that Claxton is balling out his mind. He's well on his way to becoming an all-star for them. They got his bird whites. And so that's where I'm at with that. And because I recognize that he's a top 10 big man in the basketball right now based on his statistics to start the season uh yeah that is officially a valuable asset that they do not have to worry about finding good value for as long as they keep keeping him healthy and keeping him uh on the trajectory he's on right now he, he should be able to net them a first round pick probably within a year or two i can't say the lakers have anyone like that no only ad and braun and they're not at claxton's price because claxton is a guy just on his fresh rookie contract if I'm not mistaken or fresh off his first payment so yeah that piece alone puts them in a position to be much more valuable than us as of right now in my opinion although Ben Simmons is a hell of an anchor a hell of an anchor 
Those teams both suck real bad, so they'll be fighting for the worst spot. The point is, it is that. It is that. Those are the same two teams that everyone's propping you up to say to the best thing since sliced milk. One of them is because they're my squad, but it ain't because we're doing anything good. It's just because they are the greatest franchise ever, which is why I hold them to a certain standard. They're not running themselves like they're the best franchise ever. Man, that's the bottom line. So, it is what it is, man. I think the Lakers need to take heed on everything that everyone's saying, especially people like myself who are not getting paid to see you fail or win. Just want to see us succeed because I'm a part of it as a fan of 30 years. And what I'm telling you is... I'm just as frustrated as the young fans out there cussing and fussing all over Dan the Laker fans platform. I'm just as upset. Now I want my team to not suck. I want to look at better product. I want to believe in what I'm looking at. And I want to see players that are a lot better than me on the basketball floor. Now, I don't see that. Not a lot better. They're better, but not a lot. And that's the God's honest truth. So we gotta we got we need we need to move on from some of these dudes. <laughs> Bring in the McClungs and the McCoys and the, and the Joneses. I didn't told y'all, 40 Jones. Do not sleep on Mason Jones. I don't know where he is, but he should be on our team. It's the type of things. It's like, if your franchise is thinking clearly, a player balls out in the last two games of the season. He's like 6'8", rebounds the ball, puts the ball on the floor, creates for himself, hits the three, gets offensive rebounds, defends big players. You would think that that would be a telltale sign. Damn. Maybe we should have that player on our, our team to start the season since we literally don't have any talent. Since he did so many good things in the regular season for us to end the season, maybe it would make sense to have him a part of what we're doing instead of bringing back guys that cannot help us like Damian Jones and Kendrick Nunn. Mason Jones is better than both of those guys. I'm telling you this. I'm the same guy that told you Bo Bo was going to be the truth four years ago. I'm the same guy that told you Trey Murphy was going to be the truth four years ago. I'm the same guy that told you Isaiah Hartenstein was going to be the truth several years ago. I'm the same guy pointing out all these players. And I'm telling you, Mason Jones is somebody you never heard of. And if he finds himself in the NBA, you will hear of him. The Lakers don't believe in him for whatever reason. And that's their loss. Just like I said in regards to, um, what's my guy? Uh, uh, Winion Gabriel. I'm here telling you right now, Winion Gabriel is a real player in the NBA. The Lakers just don't get it yet. They don't They don't get it. <laughs> they don't get that yet. They think he's a scrub. They're treating him like a scrub. He's producing like a real player, but they're treating him like a scrub. And then they put Damien on the floor. They put guys that ain't doing nothing, running around out there. I'm telling you, it's politics crap. All, look, Winion, you need to sign with Clutch. If you want the love you're supposed to get, just sign with Clutch. <laughs> That's the missing ingredient. You're obviously not with Clutch. If you were, you'd be getting playing time because they'd be playing players that can't even play. So you know you get playing time. So I'm Clutch. That's what it comes down to. You man. You got to have the right representation, unfortunately. It's politic ball, man. And the good pieces need to find themselves in those positions so they can be in the places they need to be to play right. Otherwise, they're not going to get there. And we're going to suck for it. So, yeah. All good players. All good players. Take your time and find the right representation and make sure that they can put you in the right places, man. So you don't be pushed aside for guys that really, genuinely cannot play better than you. <laughs> so that's something I really, really, really got to say there. That's important. Anyway, so that's what I got to say, man. Hopefully the NBA is well on its way of understanding what's wrong here and help helping along some of these, these, these owners that don't really know what they're doing. Help them understand how to help the teams, the, the NBA as a, an association. Because they do have a job. <laughs> And they're not doing it properly if they're running it the way the Lakers and the Nets are right now. Focused on the wrong things for the wrong reasons and getting the worst results for it. And us, the fans, have to pay our money to watch the garbage. We're tired of it. Dead ass tired of it. That's what I got to say. Video 44. I'll take you off watching. I'm out.